I already knew what I wanted to say and I forgot it all. I'm so annoyed right now. <sighs> Hello, my name is Brienne Beebe and I blog at Busy Miss Beebe. Today's teacher chat is dedicated to the mistakes that I made as a first year teacher and tips for how you can avoid similar mistakes. There has been an explosion of YouTube videos all about first years of teaching from some of my favorite YouTubers and I'm dying to watch them but I didn't want to until after I filmed this video to make sure I wasn't influenced by anyone else's ideas. So without further ado, I'm gonna get started. My very first mistake was not being true to who I am. So I remember my very first day of school when I was explaining my rules to, I think it was my second class at that point, and I was saying to them, if you are late to class three times, you're getting a referral. I had one girl immediately say, wait a minute, it's supposed to be four lates. You mean four, it's four lates and then you get a referral. And I was trying to follow the advice that I'd been given to be super strict at the beginning and to ease up as the year goes on, or some other teachers have heard the phrase, don't let your students see you smile until Christmas. So I'm trying to follow that advice and how I reacted to that student questioning that rule was, well, this is my classroom and I'm the boss and what I say goes and I'm just being, you know, just super strict. And that is not me at all. And the thing is, anytime that you are inauthentic, your students are going to pick up on it right away and they're going to try to exploit that. So my students would push my buttons anytime that I was being strict just so that I could kind of like, I don't know, almost lash out for lack of a better term because they were trying to engage me basically in arguments which was working because I was trying to put my foot down and be like, well, you know, my room, I'm the boss and it's not me at all and it does not work for me because it's not me. I'm naturally just a very sweet natured person so I can be strict with my students and that works perfectly fine. But being just strict for no reason does not work. So my first tip is to be yourself. Mistake number two was that I would wait to implement changes. That first year, anytime I came up with an idea that would improve something, I would hesitate to implement it because I would start thinking, well, I don't wanna throw my students off, and is it really wise to change something at this point of the year? And I would just question it, and I wouldn't implement it for different reasons, and I would kind of go along with the idea that, you know what, I'm gonna do that next year. The one specific example that I can think of regarding this was my homework board. So, when I finally got the keys to my classroom, it was at the end of our first professional development day, and my school, we go back the last Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of August. The building is usually closed on Friday, and then Monday is Labor Day, so it's still closed. And then we'd have our last professional development day on Tuesday, and then we'd start classes that first Wednesday in September. So, since I got my keys at the very end of that first Tuesday, I had very little time to do anything in my classroom because we had all these meetings and whatnot, so I was staying late to get things set up, and my projector died. I'd inherited way too much stuff from the teacher that had occupied the room previously and I was overwhelmed so I did what I could to get my room set up and I kind of suffered throughout the year with different things and one thing was my homework board. I would repeatedly copy down the headings over and over and over and I think somewhere toward the middle of the year I was like I really need to just put headings that stay and don't move and section things off on this board and just try to keep it that way. Finally, in March, I caved and I decided to probably not grade something that needed to be graded. I basically made time and forced it to fit in my schedule to create the homework board the way that I want it. And if, if you were to go way, way back to the beginning of my blog, you would see when I first set up my homework board. Um, so I think I waited until about March to do that and it was a total game changer and I just got so mad at myself, like why did I even wait to do this? And I think a lot of teachers get the idea that if you make changes like that mid-year, you're going to throw the kids off and it's not going to be good for them. But the thing is, they're kids, they're flexible, you know, their brains are malleable, they will adjust. 
I would say my second piece of advice to avoid my mistakes if you have an idea to implement that's going to change things for the better, don't hesitate, just do it. My third mistake as a first year teacher was never being absent. To this day, I am rarely absent and I really do pride myself on being that teacher that it's always there. And it's not always a good thing. You have sick days for a reason. And for me, it was kind of funny, like, going from a job where I was working hourly and I had 40 sick hours to last me for an entire 12 months to suddenly getting this job that lasts 10 months and having 15 sick days. It was like from famine to feast or from scarcity to abundance and I did not know how to handle it. And I mean, realistically, you do want to, some of your sick days to accumulate um, just for the future, you never know what's going to happen health-wise. I ideally would like to start a family someday, and I know I'm going to need sick days for then. But if you're sick, you need to take a sick day. My first year, I think it was about mid-October, I had bronchitis, and I would be in school coughing nonstop, struggling to get through a lesson, and finally, I called out when I had no voice because if you have no voice, there's no teaching for you. So the advice here is don't jeopardize your health. If you are sick, take a sick day. Mistake number four was not making time for myself. And now if I'm being honest, this is an ongoing issue for me. A teacher's to-do list is endless. And if you wait until you complete everything to do something for you, you're never going to get there. You need to make time for yourself. Your job is to take care of other people and you cannot take care of them if you're not taking care of you. It's like this saying, you cannot pour from an empty cup. So you basically need to fill your own cup sometimes. So the advice for this mistake is to make time for you. Schedule it in however often you need to. If you need to do something nightly like come home from work and make yourself a cup of tea before doing anything else to relax and unwind, or even if you do something weekly. One of my college roommates, she would every Sunday night spa herself and she would do like a hair treatment and a face mask, a manicure, pedicure, whatever. And that was like her me time that she had every week and it was, it was really adorable. And you know, just do whatever makes you happy. Set up time to exercise. Yoga is like my personal favorite. I love watching yoga with Adrienne on YouTube. I will put the link in the description box below for her channel. You know, just make time for you, enjoy your hobby, do whatever makes you happy. Mistake number five, this is actually my last mistake that I'm talking about today. I never ask for help. And this is still an ongoing issue for me, to be honest, because I'm gonna be honest about it. So I remember during interviews, if I was asked what's my greatest weakness, I'd always say, you know, I'm a perfectionist, which is annoying because people steal that as like just a thing to make them sound good. But like, no, I really am a perfectionist. Although now that I'm older, wiser, if I were to be asked that question, I would say my greatest weakness is that I am independent to a fault. Like it does not even occur to me that I could ask for help sometimes. So when you're a first year teacher, there's, there's so much to learn, there's so much to do, and you're one person. Ask for help, that's the advice. The thing is, you are in a school, you are surrounded by other teachers, and you guys, you're like-minded individuals. Most of you went into the profession with a desire to help others. So literally, you are surrounded by people that would love to bend over backwards and help you, or to answer your questions. Just ask, all you have to do is ask and there is going to be someone there willing to help you. I can guarantee it. Although if you're in a school where people are not like that, then you get another job because they're gonna be miserable and they're gonna make you miserable. That might not be the best advice. I haven't had to deal with that personally, so I don't know, but I have heard horror stories. Also as a first year teacher, it's very likely that you will be set up with a mentor. So I had a mentor for the first two years that I was teaching in my school district and she was fantastic because I think she understood that I don't ask for help so she would come seek me out and make sure everything was okay. She still does that. She's the best, I love her to death. So those are my mistakes. I felt it was really important to share my mistakes as a first year teacher because the tendency on social media is really to put 
your best foot forward and put the best parts of yourself out there for the world to see. So I mean, I just want to be honest and I thought it'd be more fun to do something different. So I had some screw ups my first year and you will too and it's okay because we are human and we're here to learn and you learn from your mistakes and you move on and you do better. Um, so aside from beating myself up, I did want to share what I did do right since day one. So I'm, I'm an organization freak. I got organized, I stayed organized. I'm probably known in my school building as one of the most organized people in the building and I'm okay with that. Um, I love organization, it makes me happy and it makes my life easier. So if you can figure out anything for organization, then get organized. If you need tips for organization, Pinterest is out there and I have a lot of stuff up on my blog and more coming soon because organization is just like my thing <laughs> and I love it. The next thing I'd say I did right maybe only worked out for me so well because I'm teaching older students but I would pull my students, I would give them like surveys, kind of like ask how I'm doing, ask like what do you think about the notes, what should we change, I'd ask them for ideas and you know what could I do better and they're honest, sometimes they're a little too honest like <laughs> we have to teach them about constructive criticism but they know what works for them usually and they're full of ideas and they'll say, you know what, this other teacher does this and that's great for me. Sometimes the kids will tell you about the things that you're doing right and it'll make you feel so much better. So I always like to pull my students. If you have kids that you feel could handle it, I would definitely talk to them and ask them for advice. I'd say another thing that I did was just make my classroom like really colorful and bright and inviting. So it just kind of happened that way. I like to be in a pretty surrounding. Your classroom is likely about to become your second home, so make sure it's a place that you like to be in. Okay. So the last thing that I've been doing since day one and I kind of pride myself on is I am that teacher that students will come to if they have an emergency. I have a drawer in my desk specifically dedicated to emergency items and it started out as things that I knew I would need personally and it's kind of grown to if students need something, they just know to come to me because I have the things. So. I keep band-aids, feminine hygiene products, snacks, mints, um, I keep lotion, sanitizer, and soft tissues on my desk. The thing is that when you have these items and students know that they can come to you when they need something, it's nice because randomly in the middle of the day you're going to see students that you know you normally wouldn't see at that time and they're coming to you because they need something and it's just nice to be able to help them with like human issues aside from you know the normal school stuff so I don't know I've just always enjoyed being that teacher that they could come to when they need some sort of emergency item and maybe I'll make a whole separate video about what I keep in my desk for students just in case so that is it for today's teacher chat if you enjoyed it then hit the thumbs up below and if you'd like to see future content, then hit the subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.